Hi, some time ago I got a Harper donation from Fitech containing two single board computers. The first one was the Fiboard session, over which I have already made a video. I will put a link into the description if you want to check it out. Today I will present the second board to you, which is the Fiboard Polux. You can see it on the right hand corner, bottom corner of my screen. So let's take a look at the specs and then we will boot the board up. So let's start. Okay, so here I am on Fitech's web page and I've already selected the page of the Fiber Polux. And here if I go to the downloads folder and if I go to quick start guide, I can open this quick start guide, which will give us a quite detailed explanation about what's on the board. Okay, so you can see the board contains of two parts. First, we have a system on a module here and we have a carrier board with all the available interfaces. First, let's talk about the system on a module. So here we have our ASIC. This time it's once again an ASIC from NXP. It's the IMX8M Plus Quad processor. This processor features a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 processor. And if you need something for real-time computing, you will also get an ARM Cortex-M7 processor. This chip can also be used if you are planning to do some AI computing on it because it comes with a neuronal network accelerator with 2.3 tops. So if you're doing something with AI, this processor might be quite interesting for you. Overall, this is quite powerful and fast. The A53 cores can be clocked with 1.6 GHz, which is quite a lot. So much for the processor, let's take a look at enough components here. So we need some sort of RAM. Here we have 2 GB of low power DDR4 RAM installed. Up here we have a power supply unit which will generate all the voltages for all the components on the single on the system on a module. Up here we have a EMC memory, which is basically an SD card soldered to a board. And this has a capacity of 8 GB. Down here we have a gigabit Ethernet file. And last but not least, down here we have a Quads SBI NOR flash. So this is really cool, we got a NOR flash and not a cheaper NAND flash, because the NOR flash is a little bit more reliable. So this is cool, we got one. And this system on the module is plugged on the carrier board. Let's take a look at the connections we have on this carrier board here. So we can power this board either from a USB Type-C power supply, or we can use an old-fashioned 2-pin connector. On my board only the 2-pin connector is um, available, but hey, never mind, this is okay for me. Okay, here we have a connector for a fan, for a camera. Here we have an RS-232 or RS-485 serial connector. If we are using a display, an LVDS display, we can connect the backlight here. Then we have an expansion header, which will yeah, allow you to um, connect some peripherals to it. So you have GPIOs, I2C, SBI, UARTs, all available here on this port. Then you got two USB 3 um, ports, two CAN ports, one micro SD card slot, an HDMI slot, and two times gigabit Ethernet. So for one, um, for I think for Ethernet zero, the Phi is already integrated here on the system on a module. For the second Ethernet jack, there is a Phi built on this PCB. Okay, and here we have an LVDS connector for a display. Here we have a USB, a micro USB connector. So this time the serial port of this chip is um, connected to a USB to UART adapter and over this um, connector we can connect our PC to the serial part of the board. And here we have two switches, one for reset and one for turning the board on and off. This is just, and I have to mention this here too, here we have a boot switch. So over this switch we can select the boot mode, by default SD card boot mode is chosen, so the board will boot from the SD card which we can plug in here. Okay, so what else do we have here on this board? 
On the back side we have some more connectors. We have two more camera connectors. We have another connector for an LSVD display and we have an audio connector here too. So the board comes with quite a bit of I.O. And I already forgot to mention the M.2 PCI Express slot. So if you want to connect any PCI Express endpoint over an M.2 cord, you're free to do so over the slot here. Okay, so now I would say let's power up the board. Therefore, first I will connect to the serial port here. So you can see we have two serial ports available if we plug in the board to our PC and I will use TTY USB 0 here because this is the output of the um, yeah of the UART where we will get the UART lock. So I have to give it my password and then we're ready to go. Okay so now I will plug in the power and the board is booting up. Okay. Cool so here we have uBoot as a bootloader. So this is uBoot SPL from, yeah, it was built in June 2020, 2022, but the version she seems uBoot um, 2021 from April, but never mind. So what do we have here? So we can see we have two gigabytes of DDR RAM here. We are running the Fitech Fibre Polux with our IMX 8MP processor. And we're booting from SD card. This looks just fine. So let me continue the boot. But maybe you have noticed I have connected an HDMI cable to this board. Because by default there is a Qt demo application. And if we connect it to a display we can see it. So let me do this. Oh, and I will type here boot to proceed with the boot process. Normally it would auto boot after some time, but I've hit a key and stopped the auto boot process. So we could take a look at the information here. But now let's continue the boot process. It's starting up the kernel. Now system D takes over and hey, here we can see a login screen or a loading screen. And it's starting our Qt sample application. So this is using Weston, which is a Wayland compositor, and it has also stored a Qt5 demo application. So I have also connected a mouse to this because I don't have a touch here. So you can see my mouse here moving and yeah, let's check something here out. So if I click here on the info section, yeah, I get <coughs> an info from Fitech. Quite nice. So let's go back here and let's see what else do we have here. We have an analog meter, an image viewer. Multimedia is maybe interesting because if we click here, we can select a demo video and play it here on our board. So let me select this. Moving the mouse here is a little bit difficult here in OBS, but this is an OBS. Thing. If I would directly connect it to a monitor, it's much easier. Hey, cool, and now we can see a small video is displayed. <laughs> Looking good. And if I connect to my board here with the root user and use top, I can see how much CPU is used. And even for playing this QT demo playing a video, only about 8% of CPU load is generated. So this is really cool. This is not much. Okay, let me quit this demo application here. And let's change back here because the last thing I want to show you is a uh, hardware control which is available here. Ah, come on. Yes. So on the board we have three user LEDs or basically one user LED because it's an RGB LED. And I can turn on and off the colors here. So now you can see red is on. Now it should be yeah, green and red. Now only green and let's turn it off already. Okay, so this is a really cool and nice um, QT demonstration how you can use the board. And I was really impressed. It takes only such a low CPU footprint when running a video, for example. This is really cool. 
Okay, so let's change back here to our serial port because we want to try some more things. First, let's check which kernel we are running. And we are running kernel 5.10.72. And here we can also see the board support package which was used to build this kernel. And another thing to mention here is we have a Cortex um, A53 processor, which is a 64-bit processor. Of course, our operating system is built for OARCH64. Okay, so let's take a look at the CPU information, proxy PU info. So this time we have a four-core processor, which we would expect. Let's take a look at the memory. So we have about, yeah, two gigabytes of memory. I think the lag here to the two gigabytes is um, because the graphic unit might need something, some memory here too. And it's using 400 megabyte, which is quite a lot, but hey, don't forget, we have a whole GUI up and running, so I think that's still okay. Okay, so what else can we check? So let's see how many GPIOs we have connected. So we have five GPIO chips available. So this gives us quite a bit of GPIOs. And if we run I2C detect, we see we have four I2C interfaces and one is for the HDMI. So this is normal on HDMI you have I2C and you have I2C to read out some monitor settings. So this is okay. Cool. And then let's check our networking interfaces. So we should see two Ethernet ports and two CAN interfaces, which we do. And last but not least, I like to end my videos with blinking some LEDs. So let's take a look if we have some LEDs available. And of course we do. So we have already seen we could control these user LEDs here. So let me change the trigger. Or yeah, let me first cat the trigger. User LED one trigger. So the current trigger is none. So let's change this to heartbeat. And of course, I will switch on my camera here. And when I enter this command, yeah, you can now see the red LED blinking with a heartbeat. Okay, so this board is quite impressive. It gives you a lot of power and a lot of opportunities which you can do with it. But you have to know this board is optimized for performance. So if you're running heavy AI tasks or heavy um, multimedia applications, but you want to stay on an embedded device, this is a good choice. The downside is it will consume more power compared to the fiber session, which I've shown you in a previous video. But nevertheless, I think this is a really impressive board and because of its capabilities, I think you can do quite a lot with it. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.